Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on our webinar today. My name is Jeff Hoffman. I'm the Director of Outbound Product Management at ServiceNow within our Customer Service Management Business Unit. And I'm joined by Prithvi Yoganan, Product Manager for our Omnichannel Portfolio. As a quick reminder, please post your questions and comments in the YouTube feed. Also, this recording will be made available to the ServiceNow community after we're done, uh, if you want to come back and reference it later on or, or share it with your colleagues. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, today's topic will be a new product capability we've launched with our Madrid release, and we're really excited about it. We're calling this product Advanced Work Assignment. A uh, quick look at our agenda. We will walk through a few different areas today. So um, what we plan to cover, and I'm sure we'll be able to leave time at the end for some Q&A, uh, we'll present a bit of an overview of Advanced Work Assignment. What problem does it address? What value does it bring? Second, we'll dive a little bit deeper into how AWA actually works under the hood. Um, and so uh, one quick disclaimer, when I say AWA, I am referring to advanced work assignment. Uh, so new acronym here that we're, we're introducing as well. Um, and then the third area, we'll really get into a hands-on demonstration. I'll hand off to Prithvi. And we'll walk through three demo scenarios using advanced work assignment. He'll provide an overview on the configuration options that drive some of the automation that we'll see in action. And then finally, we'll wrap up with a Q&A. And I've also prepared some frequently asked questions that we typically get for people that are new to advanced work assignment. So first off, let's take a look at a typical customer support journey. Um, this is really going to be the backdrop for the problem we're addressing with advanced work assignment. In today's world, we all know that getting support can be challenging at times. We will work as, as consumers or customers, we work across multiple channels. We'll have different expectations on response times and how agents service us across those channels. This means we've got to be more conversational in, in, in terms of how, uh, how our support teams actually service external customers. Each of these interactions needs to be completely accounted for and routed using the right criteria. So with that being said, we've started formulating our integrated channel experience vision. Um, in, in this vision, we see all of these different channel interactions or events as work items, work items that are going to get routed. So um, they may be part of a longer conversation or they could be tasks that need to be worked on by an agent. Um, Agents are still going to be organized by, by queues in this new world, and we need to be able to route by different criteria and prioritize how that work gets assigned. And then from a manager or supervisor point of view, we still need to be able to organize and, and measure and um, articulate changes in, in how we route that work. And so we're going to need dashboards, that wallboard type experience to be able to optimize and manage across those channels. So our answer to this new vision is our new capability known as Advanced Work Assignment, or, or AWA, as, a, as a, you may hear me refer to it from time to time. Advanced Work Assignment allows ServiceNow to automatically route work and assign based upon uh, availability or presence, capacity, and skills. This new world of, of uh, routing work is going to have a direct impact on things like both uh, customer satisfaction or CSAT, as well as employee satisfaction. It's going to completely increase that efficiency of how your agent population uh, uh, works across the different items because they'll be matched with the right work that matches their skills and availability. No more will they be cherry picking um, and having you know, more difficult work sit in the queue and waiting for somebody to go in and, and grab it, we'll make sure that, that that work is properly routed to the right agent at the right time. So from a supervisor uh, perspective, it's, it's going to completely simplify uh, that, su that supervisor's day-to-day -day work. They're gonna be able to optimize for channel performance and uh, make it easier to onboard newer channels and, and define how those, those work items get routed. So the impact here and the value for the different personas that are going to interact you know, through, through, um, through this capability are, are really well defined. You know, so from an agent perspective, we're going to provide that agent with a seamless assignment of work items. They're going to have a 
inbox that flows with new chats or cases or whatever it might be based upon whether they're online and, and you know, have, have reached that capacity and have the, the right skills. So we're gonna respect all of those attributes before we even push work to that agent. So they won't be overwhelmed. We can do things like um, you know, having capacity thresholds or overrides for newer agents or those super agents that are able to take on uh, more work than their, uh, their fresher counterparts. Secondly here, from a contact center manager standpoint, we're going to uh, empower them with a rules engine and policies to assign the right work to the right agent. And they're not gonna have to be a developer to get under the hood and do this. You know, we, we've tried to be very thoughtful with how we, we build um, the, the, the configurability of these options to be able to, to route work using uh, service channels and, and queues. Uh, we've also provided out-of-the-box dashboards and reporting to monitor the results of those assignments. So we can look at that longer-term trend and how we're, how those uh, work items and how they're being assigned is actually affecting performance and what, what are the CSAT results and um, efficiency results of how we uh, AWA is, is actually impacting the business. And then most importantly here, on behalf of the customer, everything that we're doing within customer service management um, you know, is with this customer persona in mind. And you know, we all as consumers or customers want to, to operate in an effortless environment. So make it effortless for me to, to work with an agent to resolve my issue. Uh, make sure that when my routed uh, work is assigned to an agent, that that agent actually has the skills and tools and um, ability to solve my question. So we wanna reduce friction during that conversation by knowing that context, like the language or purchase history, et cetera. Those are the types of attributes that we can actually use when it gets down to, to routing that work item uh, to the right agent. There's a couple capabilities here that I wanna cover off on before we get into uh, a, a more advanced work assignment under the hood. Um, th there's two capabilities that we've introduced here to uh, general availability in Madrid that advanced work assignments going to leverage to make a lot of this happen. So one of the first and another capability that we're, that we're very excited about, and if you haven't heard about this yet, you definitely will, it's agent workspace. Um, so a quick recap on this new user interface world that we're going to be living in and leveraging for advanced work assignment. Uh, this is another one of those game-changing type capabilities that we're bringing to market. Uh, we're completely reimagining the agent experience and providing an integrated, intuitive user experience with modern technologies to be able to allow agents to multitask across multiple uh, types of work or interactions or channels. Um, we want to do this uh, with flexibility in mind and using a modern, you know, uh, experience for those agents so that you can have all the related information and relevant information on a single canvas or backdrop. So a, a quick highlight of four of the, the key capabilities that we're introducing here with Agent Workspace, and we're going to continue to build upon these release by release, so you'll be hearing more about this. But the first one is multiple session tabs for fast contact switching. So your high volume contact center agents or even contact center agents are working on uh, lower volume, but more complex work, want to be able to work across multiple cases, tasks, interactions simultaneously. Uh, secondly, we're adding this heads up display to quickly orient the agents to information on a case or on a ticket. Um, so you'll see uh, information coming across from the account or the contact. Uh, we have a timeline to talk about the uh, progression of that case and when state has changed or when comments have been added by the customer or the agent. And then thirdly here, this SLA visual indicator. So we can see exactly how much time is left within that SLA and whether or not it's been breached. The third area here that we'll talk about is this concept of having the activity stream side by side with the case to minimize scrolling. You know, we, we actually went through and um, uh, rode along with many, many contact center agents, saw how they worked, observed their behavior, and we saw a lot of scrolling top to bottom to get to the right information. So by elevating the activity feed, and then also elevating things like related lists alongside the case details or the form details, the agent sees immediate benefit in terms of efficiency. And then the, the fourth capability here that we'll talk about is around this agent assist panel. Um, this is where we're surfacing contextual knowledge, 
service catalog items. We're even doing things in Madrid like uh, leveraging our agent intelligence to do similarity matching and display similar case or uh, suggest um, a, uh, a major issue or major case might be impacting that particular ticket. So these are some of the, the, the fundamental pieces within agent workspace that we're gonna be building on and we're using for advanced work assignment that you'll see in the demonstration. The second capability here that we're introducing uh, to support advanced work assignment is known as the interaction management system. So I just have a couple quick slides here to introduce you to that, but uh, for uh, those uh, non-interruptible channels like voice or chat um, and any of those conversational-based omni-channel interactions, we need a new way to be able to capture those interactions and record the conversation as it pertains to the case or the task. So an interaction is actually a combination of three main attributes that we want to be able to record and associate with a case in this example. Um, so we want to know who, the account, the contact, whether or not they're a, a consumer, um, how they, they interacted or reached out, whether that was through phone, chat, social media monitoring, through a partner integration, and, and what it was that they're asking about. Is this about a new case, an existing case, or some other task-based record within the ServiceNow platform? The, the benefit here is it offers a standardized sort of mechanism for requesting recording any communication. We're going to continue to build on this. It maintains track of those, those different business objects that are related to that interaction that were either created or updated during that conversation. And this is going to give us the ability to get more insights and build more capabilities on this down the road, or you'll, you'll be able to leverage it through your own dashboard or, or BI reporting. So how this is surfaced or presented within Agent Workspace um, is the, using this new modern paradigm that I talked about. You'll see here is a chat interaction. Um, you'll also notice that this uh, interaction is prepended with IMS, uh, meaning that this is a new chat interaction. And now I have the ability to create a new case, create an incident. I could associate it with, with a previous uh, uh, case or incident under this re related tasks. But this gives us that, that ability to track that conversational nature um, that, that, that's apparent in, across all industries and all lines of business when it comes to customer support today. So at this point, I'm going to hand it off to my colleague, Prithvi Yoganand, and Prithvi is going to walk you through a demonstration and some of the configuration options within advanced work assignment. Prithvi? Thank you, Jeff. Um, hello, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, uh, depending upon which part of the world you're in. My name is Prithvi Yoganand and I'm a senior product manager uh, with the customer service management business unit. And uh, I focus on the omnichannel aspects of our product. Uh, so advanced work assignment, like Jeff mentioned, is our next generation routing and assignment engine. And uh, it is also foundational to some of the cool capabilities that are in pipeline here. Uh, we are super excited about this, and you will see pretty soon why. Uh, at the core, AWA brings these capabilities to the table. You can route work items to agents based on the agent's capacity or availability. We also support declarative rule-based route, uh, you know, skill-based routing. Um, if the context around the interaction is already known, you can even use the interaction's context to route the interaction to the right queue and then to the right agent. Uh, when the work items are in the queue, you can prioritize the work items using rules or declarative methods without writing any code. When it comes to assigning work to agents, you can assign using one of the two algorithms that we ship out of the box, which are most capacity or last assigned. We also support overflow handling. And out of the box, advanced work assignment is enabled for chat, case, incident, and walkup. In Madrid, advanced work assignment is limited to these channels, but pretty soon we are going to open it up to other channels also so that you can create your own channels which are based on interaction or tasks. Now, of course, no omni-channel story or routing and assignment engine story is complete without supervisor dashboards. So we also have supervisor dashboards where you can derive channel analytics. From an agent experience perspective, we have an omni-channel presence management system, which is completely API accessible. Um, 
You can call APIs to query the agent's current presence. You can also call APIs to set the agent's presence on one or many channels. So if you have an external telephony system, and if you want to synchronize ServiceNow presence with the telephony presence, you can do that using these APIs. We also have an omni-channel work inbox where work is all routed to the agent at one place so that the agent doesn't have to go to different parts of the interface to get work. So in a gist, this is what advanced work assignment addresses. You have different types of work items within the organization. Some of them are real-time uh, conversations like chats. Some of them are tasks like cases. And there could be other requests also. Then you have queues, which are constantly being monitored by uh, managers to see what is the average wait time, what is the average handle time, is some queue getting backed up too much, do I have to staff up some queue, things like that. And then on the other end, you have agents. Agents are organized within groups. Each agent has some workload and also has some spare capacity to take up more work. So what you want to do is, um, based on conditions, you want to route these work items into the right queue. And these conditions could be, you know, what is the priority of this work? What is the status of this customer? Is this a VIP customer? Could be based on geography, could be based on the type of request. Uh, it could be any condition that you can think of. Now, once you route these work items into the right queue, they are essentially waiting in a holding tank, waiting to be assigned. So you make that assignment decision based on, is the agent available? If the agent is available, does the agent have capacity to take up this additional work? If the agent has capacity, does the agent have the right skill to take up this work? And also in certain scenarios where your primary group of agents are completely inundated with work and they can't get to the customer faster, we also support overflow wherein you can bring a backup group of agents to get to the customer quickly so that customer is not waiting for too long. So in short, given a set of work items, how do you route it, to in, route it into the right queue? And then finally, how do you write, uh, assign it to the right agent? So this is what we have on our demo menu today. Um, we will see how we route work items to agents based on their capacity and availability. We will take chat as an example and see how that works. We will also see what happens when an agent misses a chat. We will also see what happens when an agent rejects a chat. And like I mentioned, AWA is not just for chat. You can use it for routing any object. So we'll also see how case routing would work with AWA. We will see an example of overflow. We will see an example of how skill-based routing would work. And then finally, we will look under the hood and see how AWA could be configured. So let's dive into the demo. I'm logged in as an agent. The agent is on the agent workspace. Uh, this is the agent workspace that, uh, this is our next generation agent UI that Jeff mentioned during his presentation. Um, on the left, on the agent workspace, the agent sees an inbox. This is powered by advanced work assignment. Now with the inbox, uh, we also have an omni-channel presence management system where the agent can set, a, his, set his or her presence across one or many of these channels. Now in this scenario, the agent had made himself available for cases and chats. Now let's go to the customer's view of the world. I'm logged in as a customer. I'm on the customer service portal, and I want to go ahead and initiate a chat with customer support. So I click on the live agent link here, and this, converse, this conversation could be front-ended by a virtual agent too. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to bypass virtual agent and go directly to a live agent. So I've initiated a conversation with customer support, now let's go back to the agent's view. And what we see here is a chat is automatically pushed to the agent in the agent's inbox. The agent has 15 seconds to accept this chat. And the chat also shows some details about this chat. It says that it's come from George Warren, who's part of Boxio. Now, for this demo, I'm going to reject this chat. And I'm going to say, this is not my expertise. Whenever I reject the chat, I have to provide a reason. And all of these reasons are logged in the database. So that customer, and so that the manager can report on it and see what's going on. Now, when I rejected it, the chat went back into the queue, tried to find the next available agent. Let's see what happens to the next agent. 
So it got routed to the next available agent and it has landed in his inbox. This agent is going to accept this chat and it opens up the chat interface, which is powered by the interaction management system. Interaction, like Jeff mentioned, is a representation of any conversation. Here, chat is an interaction, and that's how it's powered by the interaction management system. Now, once the agent goes ahead and accepts this chat, he can go ahead and have a conversation with the customer. So what you just saw here was a chat was initiated by a customer. We had a simple routing rule to route this chat into the customer service chat queue. And at the time of assignment, we tried to assign it using availability and capacity. The primary group here was customer service chat group. We assigned it to one of the agents there. That agent rejected the chat. And then we went ahead and assigned it to the next available agent. Now let's take a look at what happens if the agent misses the chat. So I'm going to end this conversation and I'll start a new conversation. Let's go back to the agent's view. It went to the agent's inbox. The chat is waiting for agent's acceptance. We will let this chat time out. Uh, agent has 15 seconds to accept this. Almost there. And there we go. It ran out of time and the chat went away from agent's inbox. Now let's go back to our second agent. Like before, the chat went away from the agent's inbox. It went back into the queue, found the next available agent, and got, got routed to the available agent. This agent goes ahead and accepts this chat and has a conversation with the customer. So a couple of things happened here. One, the chat went back into the queue and got assigned to the next available agent. But also, if you look at the first agent, we automatically mark this agent as away. Now, maybe this agent went on a break and forgot to change his status. Now, whenever a chat is getting routed to the agent, and it's, it is waiting in the agent's inbox. It means a customer on the other end is actually waiting. Now, you don't want to make a customer's wait when your agents are not ready. So because this agent missed a chat, we automatically mark the agent away. And all of that is configurable. If you don't want to do this, you can choose not to do this. It is. It can be made possible through a configuration. Um, like I mentioned, AWA is not just for chat. You can also route cases. So we'll take an example. We'll take a look at how that can be done. So I'm back to the customer's view of the world, um, and I go back to the portal, and I am going to create a case. I'll create a case for this router. My router is broken. And I'll submit a case. So I've submitted this case. Let's go to the agent's view and see what's going on there. The first agent doesn't have it because he's away. Let's go to our second agent. So the case got routed to the second agent. And what you see here is a card which is very different from the earlier card that you saw for chat. Here, you see a short description for the case. You see the account and contact details. You also see the priority and category for the case. And you are not seeing a timer here. Uh, cases are typically long running, and they also may not have the same level of time criticality that a chat might have. So you may not want to implement a timer for case. Again, that is all configurable based on your needs. Also, the attributes that you want to sh show here is configurable on a per object basis. So you could have a different set of attributes that you want to show for case and a different set of attributes that you want to show for chat. Going one step further, you can also define what set of attributes do you want to see based on your use case. So let's say if you have two different types of cases, 
you have cases for network issues and you have cases for software issues you may want to see a different set of attributes for network issues and you may want to see a totally different set of attributes for your software issues you can do that as well awa provides that flexibility to you so i'm going to accept this case and when i accept this it opens up the case as a tab on agent workspace and like jeff mentioned it brings up some critical information about the case who the customer is a quick overview of what the customers details are and the activity stream and all the required information on one single pane of glass now let's compare and contrast this with what the experience could have been uh, without awa now think about the manager a manager would have had to look at every single case looked at the attributes of the case and based on that manually assign these cases to the agent while keeping in mind what is the agent's availability what is the agent's capacity does the agent have the right skill and all of this is pretty time consuming now if you think about it your your managers and your team leads are the most um, you know experienced people within your team and their time is critical um, if automation can help and automation can do a better job in assignment absolutely you should take advantage of that so that managers and team leads can focus on monitoring and coaching agents which could be a better use of their time now think about agent all of that work got delivered to the agent at one single place agent didn't have to hunt and go to different places places on the ui to get work the work was also auto prioritized and routed to the agent so there is very less cognitive burden on the agent agent doesn't have to figure out all of that the engine is doing its job think about the customer the the chat or the case was automatically pushed to the agent and it was not only pushed to the agent it was also pushed to the right agent who could work on this so more, from a customer standpoint there's less wait time and there's also improved csat for next part of the demo let's talk about overflow um overflow uh, for those of you who are new to this concept is a strategy that a lot of contact center uses when the primary group of agents are inundated and they want to get a backup group of agents to uh, work on this task so uh, an example here is let's say if you have a group of vip uh, a group of agents who serve vip customers and your service levels for serving your vip customers is 2 minutes but because this group is completely inundated they are not able to meet the service levels so if the customer has been waiting for more than 2 minutes you may want to bring up a backup group of agents to get to this customer quickly so uh, for this part of the demo i have two groups i have a primary group which comprises of these two agents that we talked about and we have a secondary backup group which has an additional agent where, who is part of the overflow so i'll go back to the customer's view before that let me let me go back to the agent make the agent available let me end this conversation and start a new conversation it got routed to a first agent our agent is going to reject this chat to simulate a scenario where they are completely busy um it goes to agent 2 the agent to also rejects the chat the overflow for this demo is set up for 45 seconds i have a third agent who is part of a backup group and at 45 seconds this backup group becomes eligible to take up this work and the chat should land up in the backup group agent's inbox there we go so at 45 seconds overflow kicked in and it got routed to a backup group agent and agent accepts this chat and has a conversation with the customer so this is what you just saw we um, we again had a customer initiate a chat from the portal we again had the same routing rule route the chat into the same uh, queue 
at the time of assignment, we try to assign it to an agent based on the agent's availability and capacity. And what we saw was both our agents were completely busy with other chats. They could not take additional work. The chat was waiting in the queue for 45 seconds. And at 45 seconds, we kicked in and we kicked an overflow to bring in a backup group of agents to work on this. So after 45 seconds, any agent from this larger group, which includes the primary group and the backup group, can work on this. This is a very powerful concept. Um, and this is not something that a lot of uh, competitive products out there can do. If you notice, we are not creating a separate queue for overflow. We are retaining the work item within the same queue. What uh, the, uh, the benefit that it brings here is you don't have to create too many additional queues. There's no proliferation of queues, which makes the queue management much more manageable. Secondly, this work item stays in the queue, which means your, your queue reports are much you know, uh, the sanctity of the queue reports and the work item reports are maintained because this customer has not been waiting for just five seconds that he spent an overflow. This customer has actually been waiting for 45 seconds. This is a really, really powerful concept. Finally, let's look at an, exa at an example of uh, skill-based routing. So for this, I have another customer Michelle, who is a German customer. We know that by her profile. Her country code is Germany. Her preferred language is German. So when she goes ahead and initiates a chat, we have some rules in place in the system to automatically tag the chat request with German as the required skill. And we'll see how skill-based routing works. Now, in our agent pool, our first agent has German as one of his one of his skill sets. We'll make him unavailable to see what how the system behaves. Agent two is available, but this agent does not have the required skill. We'll go back to Michelle. We will initiate a chat. So when Michelle initiated a chat, her chat request was tagged with German as a mandatory skill. When I go to agent two, nothing has got routed to agent two because agent two did not have the required skills. I go back to agent one, I'll make him available. And the chat immediately got routed to the agent because he had all the required skills to work on this. And the agent goes ahead and accepts his chat. Again, what you saw here was um, when the chat was initiated by the customer, we added the skill, the German language skill as a required skill on this chat. We again routed it to the same queue. What you're noticing here is we are not creating a separate queue for our German customers. We are still routing it into the same queue. And at the time of assignment, in addition to availability and capacity, we are also evaluating for skills. We looked at our primary group. We saw that one of the agents had the required skills, and we went ahead and assigned it to the agent who was best suited for this. So um, again, this is, uh, this is really powerful. This is not something that a lot of competitive products out there can claim. Um, Skill-based assignment with, with the goodness of queues, where skills are treated as another attributes for making assignment helps you make the queues more manageable. You don't have a proliferation of queues. Your queues are much more manageable. So with that, let's talk about how to set up AWA. Um, so AWA follows a few steps for setting up. The first step is, how. what do you want to route? This is what we call as a service channel. Service channel is essentially an object that you want to route through the system. Then you want to define where do you want to route this. This is where you define queue. You will define what conditions under which a work item gets routed into the queue. You will also define the sorting order of work items within the queue, which helps in prioritization. And finally, you will also define overflow strategy for the queue. And when it comes to assignment, you will choose 
one of the two algorithms which are most capacity or longest title and if you want to do skill based assignment you can optionally do that as well in addition you can set up inbox card layouts for specifying what you what attributes do you want to show to the agent and you can also um, have different present states for managing presence of the agents so let's talk about how to set up advanced work assignment Uh, before I dive, dive into the setup, um, I wanted to take a quick pause and see if we have any questions. Hey, Prithvi, this is Jeff. I've been addressing, we've had several come in um, via chat. Uh, the one I think that um, may require just a little bit more color on your side is around the overflow queues. Um, uh, Alakudi has asked here regarding um, if there, if, if you go through multiple overflows and that chat does not end up getting routed or is timed out, um, how do we address that? Uh, my response was around uh, you know, dashboards and the supervisor visibility to those rejected or timed out items, but also you know, best practice would be to maybe ensure sufficient overflows were, were available. But if you could show a little bit on that overflow configuration, that might be helpful. Perfect. We will talk about it when we talk about the queue configuration. Okay, so let's talk about service channel first. Uh, this is where you are defining what do you want to route through the system. So let's take chat as an example. Now here in the upper portion of the uh, of the screen, you see the functional definition of the channel. Um, chat service channel is basically any record in the interaction table which is of type chat. As you scroll down, you also have capacity and utilization settings. Uh, here, default set and capacity is set to two, which means every agent in the system can handle two chats simultaneously. Now, obviously within your organization, not every agent will be equally skilled. You may have some rockstar agents who can do much more. You may have some newbie agents who, can, who cannot do two chats at the same time. So we also allow you to do overrides on a per individual basis. Now, here in this example, John is a rockstar agent. He can do five chats at the same time, whereas Ned is a newbie. He can do only one chat at a time. You can also specify utilization condition here. Now, this is the condition under which agent's capacity is getting utilized. Now, uh, let's take an example of case for utilization. Think about um, the scenarios in which the agent's capacity is getting utilized. It could be utilized when AWA automatically routes a case to the agent. It could be utilized when the agent manually picks up a case from uh, you know, existing list of unassigned cases. It could even get taken up when a manager manually goes ahead and assigns work to the agent. So AWA is cognizant of all of that. So when AWA makes the assignment decision, it takes the true utilization of the agent into consideration. So let's say if the agent has capacity for five cases and a manager has manually assigned four cases already, AWA takes that true utilization into consideration and assigns only one additional case to the agent. It will always suspect your current utilization. It will never try to assign you more than what your capacity is. Then we have inbox layout, which is where you define what attributes do you want to show to the agent when the work is routed to the agent. Every service channel also comes with a default layout where you can define what you want to show. And you can also have additional layouts based on your needs. So here's the layout that you saw when the chat got routed during our demo. This layout got applied whenever there was an interaction or there was a chat where contact is not empty. And under those scenarios, we want to show a short description, contact, and account. You can choose any attributes that you want from the object itself to show here. And you can have different layouts based on your use cases and needs. And finally, we have queues here on the service channel um, screen. 
um, which list all the queues that the service channel has. So let's go to the queues. Let's go to the customer service chat queue. Again, the top section of this of the uh, screen here shows the functional definition of the queue. Uh, this is a queue which is for chat service channel. Um, you can also set a schedule on the queue. So if you don't want the queue to be available in certain schedules, you can do that using standard platform schedule management. As you scroll down, you also see a place for defining routing condition. This is where you will define the conditions under which a chat gets routed into this queue. Um, you can use a simple condition using a simple mode, which would give you a Oops, I think we lost a little bit of audio. You can do that as well. Um, so something to keep in mind here is um, when, when you create a case service channel, AWA does not mandate you to go ahead and route every single case using AWA. The way AWA works is uh, when you go ahead and create a case, AWA will evaluate if there's a corresponding service channel. AWA also evaluates if there's a corresponding queue for matching um, the needs and then go ahead and route it through AWA. So if you have um, you know, simple one and done cases that you want to route to AWA and you want to come, you, know, uh, the ma you want the manager to assign manually for some of those complex cases, you can do that as well. You can go ahead and define your routing rules in such a way that only the, uh, the simple one and done cases gets routed to AWA and more complex cases can be assigned using, a using uh, by the manager manually. So AWA also provides you with that, that flexibility. As you scroll down, we have assignment eligibility, and this is where we define overflow. The first record here indicates that this group is eligible at zero seconds for getting a work from this queue. This is what we saw with, uh, with our first two agents. Our first two agents were part of this queue were part of this group and as soon as a work item appeared in that queue it got assigned to the agents in this group now at 45 seconds we bring brought in a backup group to assist in getting to this work so at 45 seconds this group becomes eligible now important thing to note here is this is what we call as eligibility if 45 at 45 seconds it is not only the backup group, it is also the primary group which is eligible. So during the first 45 seconds, it was only the primary group which was eligible. At 45 seconds, we have two groups which are eligible so that you have a better chance of getting an agent to work on this. So as you go through your overflow um, strategy, you're expanding the pool of agents. So you're having a better chance of an agent getting to this work item. Then we have work item sort order. Uh, typically, when you look at queues, um, you look at queues as a first in first out mechanism. Our philosophy here is you can go ahead and, and order items within the queue using any attributes. And that is what the sort order here enables you to do. So here, by default, it will be um, sort work items within the queue will be sorted by um, the uh, created on, and then it can also be sorted by the VIP customer. So you may have a lot of customers waiting in the queue, but then if a VIP customer comes in, even though the VIP customer comes in later in time, because you're sorting items based on the customer status, the VIP customer gets bumped up in the queue. And finally, let's go to the assignment rule. So once the work item is in the queue, they are essentially waiting in a holding tag, waiting to be assigned. So this is where assignment rule comes into picture for making that assignment decision. 
um, you can assign based on either most capacity or last assign. Most capacity is um, is where you try to assign it to an agent who has the most spare capacity. Last assigned essentially is a round robin mechanism. When you come to rejection and handling, this is where you can decide whether you want to provide the agent with the option to reject the item or not. Now in our demo, we saw two buttons on the card. We saw a reject and we also said, saw an accept. If you uncheck this, the agent will not have an option to reject the work item. Reassign on timeout helps you specify a timeout. For chats, we saw that we had implemented a timeout. For cases, we did not. And this configuration lets you define that. Now, when the timeout actually occurs, you can optionally set the agent's presence to one of the available presences. Again, this is configurable. We saw a demonstration of this during, um, the, oh, during our demo, where the agent got, assigned, uh, got changed to away. Um, and you can configure that from here. Finally, for skill handling, uh, optionally, if you want to enable skill-based routing, you can do that by uh, these configurations. If you check this, we will go ahead and, um, and rank all the agents based on skill matches. Now, if we find the an available agent who is matching the skills, great. If we don't find it, we'll still go ahead and assign it. But if you want to enforce your mandatory skills, go ahead and check this box so that we filter the agents down to the to only those who have all the required skills. Now, coming back to the, the queue and the overflow strategy, as we bring in overflow, we also provide you the flexibility of choosing the assignment rule while doing the overflow. So let's say in the first 45 seconds, you want to be absolutely sure that you get an agent who has the right skills. But then after 45 seconds, because the customer has waited too long already, you want to relax those skill requirements. You want to just get an agent as soon as possible. You can do that as well. Finally, let's go to the present states. You can set your agent's presence to these present states. Um, this is an example of an available state, and this available state is applicable for these two service channels. Um, you can optionally either show those channels to the agent so that agents have granular control of choosing their presence on those channels or not based on these configurations. And if you want to assign those present states to specific group of agents, you can do that as well. So that pretty much wraps up my demo. Um, let's take any questions if we if we have any questions. So no additional questions coming into the YouTube feed just yet, uh, but we can give it another second. And if not, I can actually go ahead and take control here, Prithvi. Sure. And, and I've uh, pre-baked some of my FAQs. So um, getting into to some of the frequently asked questions that we do here, um, you know, first off, how do I create a new service channel? Uh, we've gotten this you know, from a few early adopters and people going through configuration. Um, maybe you've extended the case table, for example, or you, you want to use this for another um, uh, ITSM uh, task like request. Today, we only support the four out of the box um, entities that we outlined. So uh, customer service case, chat interaction, incident, and walk up. Um, those are supported in Madrid, as Pridvi mentioned, and uh, the safe harbor does apply here. Um, in a future release, we hope to open this up to more configuration of additional service channels. The, the second uh, FAQ that I get quite a bit is how does AWA work with assignment rules or even an agent intelligence where we're using machine learning to auto categorize, prioritize, and route? Um, so the, the short answer is uh, uh, AWA will, will route those work items that are created without an assigned to um, designation. So if assignment rules or agent intelligence uh, are in place, those will take precedence. 
Uh, Agent intelligence will work nicely with AWA in terms of that it would uh, most likely apply the assignment group and not the assigned to. So uh, agent intelligence for the group, AWA for the individual. Uh, another frequently asked question that we get is, why are work items not appearing in my agent's inbox? So there's usually a few steps that we'll go through in, in uh, discussing here. You know, first off is, is the agent's presence set to available? That's the, so the first troubleshooting step. The, the second is to, to think about, is skill-based routing being enforced? And are we looking at mandatory skills? Uh, has the third, have the, does that particular agent reached their capacity and not able to take on additional work? And then fourth, you know, this is, uh, is that a agent assigned to the group that is mapped to the queue, right? So those are four simple troubleshooting steps that we'll typically go through when looking at where that work item sits and, and, and why it has not yet been assigned. The next piece here when you're going through and, and if you're uh, evaluating this for the first time and wanting to see you know, how those work items are being designated and mapped to their documents, and those documents would be the case or incident or interaction, et cetera. Um, while we don't expose the table to um, the application menu, you can navigate to uh, the, the table, you know, typing in AWA underscore work underscore items dot list in the classic UI's filter navigation. So if I'm in UI 16 and I go to my filter navigator, I can type in uh, that table dot list and be able to see what's pending out there. So. Through some of my configuration and troubleshooting, I've typically favorited that table just because it's dynamically changing as those work items are coming in and things are getting queued and assigned. Uh, so it can be helpful. Not something that you would necessarily present to an agent or in a production environment, but for testing, it can be, be really, really useful. Uh, and then lastly here, number five is, how is capacity and utilization calculated? Um, you know, the, there's some fields and attributes where we're setting that up on the, the service channel level. Um, but you know, it's, uh, sometimes it's good to see how that, uh, that how that's actually calculated. So I've prepared a couple slides here. Um, the agent's workload is the sum of two things. First is the, the total count of work items that have been offered to that agent and are pending his or her, her acceptance. And the total count of documents, uh, meaning you know cases, uh, incidents, chat interactions, or walkups that, that are in progress and are currently assigned to that agent. So you can see here in the next slide, that workload calculation, those documents that are in progress, they are assigned to an agent and um, the assigned to field is populated and they satisfy the following utilization conditions defined in the service channel. So things like the state is not closed complete or closed companion, com abandoned, those utilization conditions are something that you do have the ability to configure and, and probably uh, talked about those a little bit earlier. So um, I've got my quick summary slide here. I, I, I will uh, see if additional questions come into the, um, the YouTube chat here. Uh, we'll circle back to those. Um, just a quick summary. You know, when we talk about advanced work assignment, we really want you to take home from this presentation and, and this video is that uh, advanced work assignment is completely changing how work is routed and assigned within the ServiceNow platform. You know, no longer are we just, you know, simply just a pull model uh, or using some advanced you know, scripting or additional work that you're, 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 you're um, putting into the platform, but the system can actually drive and dictate how that work is efficiently and effectively assigned. Um, and secondly here, AWA can be used here to route those cases, interactions, incidents, and walk-ups using presence, capacity, and skills. So think about those as you're taking this back home to your own environments and, and how you may configure it for your use cases. Those are the primary constructs that we're gonna be working with. And third, and this is actually really powerful. I think once you, you start using this in your own, um, uh, environment and, and applying your own uh, sort of, uh, uh, customer or, or uh, business cases towards this, you'll find that this this ability to prioritize and configure overflow work to ensure that the customer experiences prompt resolution is is a differentiator. So um, being able to that work item sort field that the you know, showed with um, VIP versus when that interaction that chat interaction was created, being able to to take work 
within a queue and be able to stack rank it based upon those criteria. That that really is a game changer in terms of being able to provide a, a tailored, you know, high touch customer experience for any of these uh, the, the, these channel interactions. So with that said, uh, I do want to give a quick reminder and shout out that knowledge is quickly coming upon us. Uh, we have workspace uh, uh, or agent experience labs uh, at Knowledge in Las Vegas, where you'll be able to see some of this hands-on and configure it hands-on. We'll also be highlighting it down on the uh, the demo pavilion. So please, you know, come stop by, grab one of our solutions consultants. Uh, both Prithvi and I will be in attendance, so feel free to to, to introduce us and um, uh, ask any additional questions you might have. Uh, look forward to, to hearing from you and your own stories and how you're adopting advanced work assignment. And I want to thank you all for attending today. So hope to see you at Knowledge. I think we've got a couple more questions. I think uh, Al Alakadi had one. And uh, perfect thank you for being also on the live chat. And as you take a moment, Jeff, to quickly look at that question, I'll remind everyone that if you have more questions, um, use that community link put into the, the live chat. Uh, so that way you can still post questions and uh, both Jeff and Privy will be able to respond on the community. Yep, so the, the last question here I see is regarding uh, uh, routing a chat to multiple agents available based upon capacity in a group and, and let one agent pick it up. Um, so that, that sort of you know, um, ad hoc selection or personalized selection of, of a chat is not quite the design of, uh, of advanced work assignment. It is more geared towards finding the best you know, agent at that given time. That said, there are things that we're doing for, for case, um, uh, incident, and, and uh, when you define that service channel, if there are criteria that you're evaluating that you want to be able to go into may, maybe more of a queue and allow that uh, agent selection based upon you know, uh, you know, priority or a spotlight score or something of, of that nature, um, then you can filter those out and put them in their own designation, but they wouldn't be presented in the inbox. Prithi, any additional color you want to add to that one? He's still on mute. <laughs> no, you said correctly, Jeb. Um, so, uh, advanced work assignment focuses on pushing work to the right individual. Uh, in a pull-based mechanism, um, you are essentially relying on agents to pull work and fill up their capacity. Um, that is sort of contrary to how advanced work assignment is designed to do. But I, I, yeah, just the, the takeaway though is by defining service channels, defining queues, you should be able to carve out, you know, if you have different types of work that have different levels of expectation in terms of when it's assigned, then we can support that. That, that is correct. Uh, just by creating a service channel, AWA does not mandate you to route all types of work of that type to AWA. Um, like I mentioned before, um, you could have a case service channel and you could define a bunch of queues for routing those cases. AWA will route only those cases where you have a matching queue. Mm -hmm. For anything where you don't find a matching queue, you could still you could still use a different mechanism for assigning those works. Well, and then uh, the other thing I'll add, you know, uh, knowing that workspace agent workspace comes out with additional capabilities. Um, the the notification engine that we introduced in Madrid would give that ability to broadcast, right? So if you have a rule, a, a notification, like for a group, for let's say a case comes in and you wanted five agents to be notified that that group has um, been introduced to their queue, you could in fact use the notification engine. It wouldn't be in the inbox, but there is a, a, a modal display and a notification tray where you can keep those, those push notifications. So in terms of being real time, making sure the agents have the most information available to make the right decision and select the work that they're going to be working on, uh, Workspace is, is uh, really well designed for that, that experience. All right, great. Thank you all and we'll uh, see you at Knowledge and also in and around on the community. Thanks everybody.